Hi, Julie Torrance here. I've got my Prismacolor 72 set. And I've got this watercolor that we worked on together. We did this together. And so I was going to take you on the journey for the next step. Now I brought you in close. So I'm going to do my best to always keep what I'm working on in frame. But I may not always have the whole, I know I won't have the whole picture in frame. So these 72 colors have multiple trays. And I'm going to lay these trays out. And again, I realize you can't see them. But I'll let you know the colors as I grab them. I also have, I don't need this, it's a paper punch. <laughs> I also have um, a regular pencil. I've got um, a bigger Sharpie. I've got a littler Sharpie. This one's called Ultra Fine. I've got a white Jelly Roll pen. And then I've got a Stetler. And this is a 0 0.1. Let me make sure. Yes, this is a 0 0.1. I've got a little piece of paper to try colors in case I'm not sure. I have a metal er eraser. This is a metal pencil sharpener. And the reason why I'm pointing this out, when you go to buy a pencil sharpener, this is one of those things that I don't recommend that you get from the dollar store. Go and get um, a good metal one. I paid, I want to say it was like $2.99. I got two of them in a pack at Office Max, which is just one of those big box office supply stores. So I'm going to put some more detail on these and we're going to get started right now. So I'm going to start with a red. This one's called magenta. And I think it's it's similar to the, the red color that we already have going on. And I'm going to give this a turn. And I want to just bring out some of the shape of, of this. So I'm just going to make some lines. And, you know, this is, this is why I brought you in close. This is fine work. Not fine like, I'm so fine, but smaller detail. Now this side has more of, a, of an orange color going, but I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of this red on this side as well. One thing I like about this project is I have the other mushroom right here, and you'll be able to see if you like what I did or not really. Okay, I'm going to work on this one. And really what I'm doing is kind of adding some texture. I'm, I'm trying to bring the roundness out. Because this, this edge is farther away. This is closer up. It has volume. It has shape three dimensions and that's what I'm going to try to kind of enhance so now the stem I know is going to be darker towards the top because there's going to be some no matter which way the sun's coming from there's going to be some shading so I'm going to go all the way across here and now I'm just going to go on the edge not a whole lot Just like that. Same here. I'm going to go all the way across and I'm making like an upside down U shape. And then just on the edge. Both sides. To try to make it look just a little bit more round. I'm going closer together the further I get towards the top. And now this guy. And I'm giving this guy, he looks to me to be more in the flora and the fauna. So I'm giving, I gave him just a little more there as well as I'm going to on the top. Now you might be saying, I can't even see those lines. That's possible. But I think you'll get the overall as we keep moving along. Okay, I like that so far. So now I'm going to look for 
something in kind of the tannish tone. This is called Goldenrod. It's probably going to be a little more yellow than maybe I have in mind. I'm going to just set that one aside because I do want to use it, but I'm looking for something that's just a little less yellow, a little more beige. What color is this? This is Burnt Ochre. I'm going to give it a sharpen because I want it to have a pretty sharp point. Now, there are many people that use colored pencils and they um, use an electric sharpener. I just grind mine away. I'm going to start working under here. Again, darker towards, but I'm, and lighter towards this outer edge. So I'm just going to put these little lines in. I don't know if you can see a difference yet or not. I hope so. Okay. Now I'm going to take the same pencil and I'm going to, because this is like a pretty intense um, network. And I'm just going to go and put some lines in from the outer edge towards the middle. And again, I'm following the curves. There's nothing about this, I promise you, that is perfect. Nothing. I am just, I'm doing what I feel like in my heart, really, is what I'm doing. And I'm doing the same thing here. And I'm going to do this. This is, I can just maybe get a line or two in each of those little spaces. That's okay. All right. Now I want to bring out the lines that make it up that I did in watercolor. So I'm going to use the same pencil and I'm just going to sharpen up those lines. It's not that I don't like what the watercolor did. I like it very much, but I'm just trying to give it more, more texture, more punch. And this is where your purest of watercolorists will walk away. And, and that's fine because they just use their watercolors and their work is beautiful. Well, I think my work is beautiful too, but it's different and that's fine. So how are you? I hope you're doing well. I'm going to put the same color and I'm just shading right at the top. Doing the same thing, just bringing some extra oomph to those lines that I had already put in. It seems like with the rain and the weather that we've had, the fire smoke from Canada, I hope that means that maybe in Canada they're having less deals with fire. If you're in Canada, let me know. 
It's been worrisome. Just, you know, what are the people going through? Okay. I'm liking that. Now, it feels a little bit too spider webby to me. So I'm going to grab just a cotton bud and just give these a blur. It's picking up the colors on the edges. It's picking up All those colors that I just put in there and just softening. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm liking that just fine. All right. I'm going to go ahead with the top a little more. I'm going to pull out an orange. This is a lighter orange and it's called Pale Vermilion. This is a darker orange and it's called Poppy Red. Okay, so it says red, so let's just look. This is the Poppy Red. It is a warm red. This is the Pale Vermilion. Not a whole lot of difference. So, if I want some contrast, I'm going to have to think again. Okay, what is this? This one is called orange. That looks more orange to me, as the name states. I'm going to start with that. And I'm going to add some orange now to this side. I'm not obliterating the lines that were there. And I'm just adding a little bit over the, the lightest area. I like that. I'm going to do the same over here. Oh, wrong picture. <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to do that one eventually. Yep, I like that. Just kind of coloring it. I'm going to add a little of this orange to this side of both of them. And I'm gonna grab that Q-tip again, or cotton bud, and give this a rub on this side. I'll give it all a rub. Yep. I like that. Okay. Now, I don't wanna lose this light area so i'm going to pick not white but almost a white and this is called beige there's enough going on and i'm just going to add again going in the direction of the roundness and i'm just going to bring that up I'm also going to run it right down these stems. Good. All right. I'm going to give this a sharpen. Let me know in the comments what you think so far. I'm not even sure you can see both to compare. Let's just take a look at both and you can see if there's a, a difference and if it's a difference that you like. Okay, now with this light, I'm going up around the edge, this kind of a upper scallopy edge because I think that would show up with just a little more light than for instance, the bottom edge. So I'm just adding that little detail. It 
It's there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. Now, I didn't go all the way up. I just went part. Okay, now I'm going right in with some white. Now, Prismacolor White, my experience is it is pretty, what would you say, opaque. And it will kind of take away. So you would be surprised. There was something other color on there. But you would be surprised at what it can do. It can also blur. Can you see that I'm blurring out what's already there? But this is really waxy now. And so to try to go over it with another color can be a challenge. Not always, obviously, but it can be. So just kind of keep that in mind. But now... These are things you're going to want to test with whatever watercolors you're using. But I'm just giving this an overall deeper shine. I'm also going to, not the whole stem, just a highlight. Just a little highlight. Just like that. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to give this mushroom some highlight in the darkest areas, just where maybe the sun is coming through the leaves, just like that. Just here, there, here, there. Okay, I like that. How about these leaves? Let's take a look at these leaves. I'm going to just grab up. I've got right here together four green colors. Just, just random. Just pull them out. And I'm not going to be working on these leaves right now. I'm just going to be working on the leaves that are attached, hopefully. I mean, I got a little off kilter here, but <laughs> I'll try not to do that. Now... I even want a more greener green. Oh, here. This is one that's called, I believe, oh, it's lime peel. This is going to be brighter than I thought. I thought it was going to be more like a leafy green. Not too bright, though. Not too bright. Yeah. See, this, almost, almost a turquoise. This is, this is got a lot of blue in it. So I'm going to do this one. Now, this one might be more what I, all right, this one's parrot green. And is that, did I, no, I was going to say, did I just make that up? No. And yeah, you can see again, we're, that was like teal. N none of these colors are bad, but I just wanted a little bit more. Okay, apple green. I wanted a little bit more of a true green. This is not that different. This, this one is the one I think I'm going to start with. I'm going to go down the center of each stem with this. I want to bring a little bit more green back instead of such orange stems. Getting a little crowded here, but that's okay. Yep, I like that. I'm going to add some of this now just to the center of these leaves. And when I say the center, I mean the center where it's joining the stem. I think it's going to give them a little more life. Because they are still, they're still producing chlorophyll. They're still alive. But they are starting to feel autumn. They're starting to feel the, the shorter days, the cooler nights. And this is where 
if you just couldn't get your watercolor brush into a little spot, you can kind of make up for it if you want. Okay, I like that. Now I'm gonna go with this more of a yellow green and this is the one, it's called um, Yellow Chartreuse. Now here, let's take a look at this green yellow. Almost a neon -y color. And I like that. And I'm going to put that. I'm going to give this a quick sharpen. Okay. That's why I say have a sharpener near. And I'm going to go around the green I just added. And some places I'm going to add more. Some of these I'm not going to add as much. But they're all going to get a little punch of this chartreuse color. I said everyone. <laughs> All the way around. Okay. I like that. Yep. Now the edges are almost a brown. I'm going to bring back some orange. Now is this that vermilion? Poppy red. Let's find that light pale vermilion. I'm just going to add some of this. And what I'm hoping is maybe it's going to look like the leaf caught a little light and it's showing off a little bit of its more brilliant color. And I'm going really on the outside of the leaf. I'm not going on top of watercolor so much. And I'm pretty much picking one side, which is kind of the, I guess the left of me. Maybe this, seeing me do this, can help you understand maybe how I do like watercolor on multiple pages and then I do highlighting on multiple pages instead of taking each sheet that I'm making and going from start to finish on each one. I like that this puts me in a, a certain mind, mindset. All right, I'm going to add some of this to this, oh, um, kind of like uh, the floor of the, some of this you're not even going to hardly see, the floor of the, of the forest or the woods or the woody area where this happened to go. And I'm going to grab, this one is the goldenrod and add a little of this. It's gonna give it some more texture. I am keeping in mind that people are going to be cutting this out. So I, I don't wanna put like little skinny little sticks coming out, although that would be cool. Okay, I'm just leaning back a little bit and I wanna check Let's look at this one. This is that lime peel. I want to add a little of this. I think I'm going to add it where I stopped the orange. And again, I'm not really going on the watercolor. I'm, I'm going around it on the outside of where I had watercolor. I'm just adding a, a little dot of an extra color. Okay. 
I am liking this very much, very much. All right, now I want a pop of yellow. I mean pop. This is canary yellow. Now I believe this is this. This is the yellow chartreuse, yes. And I think this is even brighter, yes. And I am going to add pops of this kind of random on the mushrooms everywhere. And I want this to be like pure sun. Pure sun is hitting this here, there, here, there. I'm going to even go on the stem. And I'm not doing them all the same. I'm not saying, you know, this to the right, this to the left. Nope. But I think this is going to give it, again, just a kick in the pants of bright. I love color. I love bright. Tell me you don't like this. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's cover this up. And let's see. Hang on. I'm going to... That's probably blinding you. Okay. So here was where we started. Quite similar. Okay. Now, what do you think about that? Can you see a difference? Let's look at them both. I see a difference and I like the difference. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work on this one. Are you still with me? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm debating. Should I put some of the black highlights in this? I don't think I'm going to. All right. Let's start out with that kind of a tannish color that I pulled out. I think it was this goldenrod. I don't think so. Did I put it back? Probably. Don't worry, because if they're not identical, it doesn't matter. What are you? Sienna Brown. Let's go with that one. Maybe this one's in just a little bit of a darker spot. We don't know. Okay, just making these lines that I'm going kind of with the shape that I would suspect this has. And I didn't even really have a, a mushroom reference. I just kind of went with my, uh, you know, my memory. Because again, what kind of mushrooms are these? Fantasy. There's no specific name. And I'm going to be working, if it's okay with you, just a little bit faster. Because you've already seen me do this. This one you don't really see. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to take this brown and really define his bottom edge and give him just a little more darkness way at the tippy top. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to grab that light vermilion. I think is the one I used. This is orange. Pale vermilion. Okay. And I'm going to go in with the other lines, the crossing over lines. Does it bother me that I'm not using the exact colors I used the first time? Not at all. Not at all. These are going to be cut apart. They may not even be related to each other. 
once it's done, once all is said and done. I'm going to add a little of this to this edge. And this edge. I'm going to go back and get that brown. And I'm going to give this edge a little more dark. Same on all of them, but especially that one. Okay. Good. I'm going to grab that Q-tip. And it's got all kinds of autumn colors on it. And I'm just going to blur away. I'm going to show you on my... This is that. Check the color. Watch. Can you see that color's coming off? It, it is picking up and moving color around. All right. The more red color. This one is the poppy red. And I'm going to bring, again, some lines that kind of indicate the, the shape of this. Color it in a little, much less on this side. And I'm going to bring this color out to the edge of here. Yep. I'm going to add some of this red to here. Right out to the edge. And here. Putting those lines in, in kind of a direction. Okay. Now, I don't want the brown color. Let's go with goldenrod. I had that ochre color. What did I do with it? Here's the yellow. Was it this? I don't think. Yeah, no, that's canary yellow. All right, that's all right. What are you? Yellow orange. Well, that might be good. Let's go with that. All right. I'm going around this bottom edge. And I'm going to do the same down here. And I'm putting the lines in kind of like the direction of the roundness of the stem. Mm -hmm. I want that vermilion or poppy red. Okay, here we go. Bring it this way. I'm making kind of upside down. No, right side up use this time. Okay. I like that. Yep. I'm going to grab the one that's just called orange. And just I'm just adding a little bit of color. Like, like I'm just dropping in a little pigment. And now I want that Q-tip. I showed you an example. Here it is. And then I threw it. And now I'm just going to blur all this. Good, good, good. Okay. 
Now, let's get one of the lighter colors. Maybe this one, the golden rod. I'm going to give it a sharpen. And I am going to go now around the outermost edge like, like this might be where the sun is going to hit it. Right on the very edge. Now I'm not going over the watercolor. I'm going beside it. Good. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and put in kind of the scallopy edge. I think this maneuver adds a lot more texture. Yep. He's dark. We're not going to mess with him too much. Darker it is, of course, the less detail. All right. Now, this guy looks just watercolory. I'm going to add some texture. Yep, I like that better. Now I'm grabbing that white pencil. I'm going in with some little highlights. Little highlight right here on the very edge. He might have a little, little sunny moment. Good. Q-tip. If your Q-tip starts making sharp uh, lines, turn it around. It's just you're, you've rubbed the cotton and compressed it so much that you're now you're just blending with the stick of it. And it, maybe that's what you want. But if, if it's not what you want, then just turn it over. All right. Good and good. Let's work on these leaves. I want to get the green back. And I'm going to grab the apple green and I'm going right down the center of the stem. Okay, that looks good. Good. Yep. Okay. I'm going to grab the orange. And I'm going to go around the outside. Right here where that sun is just, just peeking through. And give it a little orange highlight. Okay, I'm going to pick this light green. This one is called the Yellow Chartreuse. Go right in the center of these leaves. This leaf is kind of facing away from us. I think I'll just make him right there green.
I like that. Yep, I like that. Okay. I'm going to get even a greener green and go right near the stem. I like the way that the Prismacolors can really layer compared to others that I've used. I've been able to layer up the Prismacolors the best. They work good for me. All right. Now, have really good, like the powerful highlights. This is the Canary Yellow, which I think is here. Yes. Good. Let's get that going. Add some highlights. Yep, I like that. I'm going to add some down here on the stems where some light might be getting in. Good. And now the white. Just a little. You can go a little too crazy with the white. Okay. Now we've got both of them done. I like them. I, I'm going to do a little more with these in the middle, a little more green. I want to get my blurring here. I like that better. I think I was using this one. Okay. I'm going to give them a, a blur. Super. I'm liking it. I want to do some more on this. Let's grab a red. Yep, something like that goldenrod. That's that yellow ochre. More yellow. There. I'm going to add some yellow to this one. Okay. All right. Well, you're going to have to let me know what you think in the comments. How do you like them? In the meantime, if you've stayed with me this long, thank you. Why not subscribe if you haven't? Today's a great day to subscribe. I look forward to seeing you. Thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends. I'll see you in another video. Bye now.